Didn't get a PS3 this holiday season? Don't worry about it. You got the blue lines. On this episode of the Blue Alliance, we're going to show you how to build a custom controls box with switches and sliders to more accurately control your robot than with the kit apart joysticks. Also, we're going to show you how to take apart an easy button to use for whatever you want to use it for. This is Team 177's 2006 operator box. It has four switches up here that were used to control the harvesting mechanism, a slider down here that was used to aim the turret, a rocker switch here for agitation, as well as an easy button which, of course, fired proof ball straight into the goal. Inside this box, you'll see it's kind of a rat's nest of wires. Uh, once you start to actually look at how it works though, things are a little bit less complicated than they seem. There's a DB15 connector here that uses the game port standard. This was used back in the day, like the 1980s, and it would plug into your computer, and you could buy any game port compatible gamepad or joystick and use it on your computer and know exactly how it would behave. Now since FIRST is using a slightly modified standard here, you're going to want to check out the white paper that we've posted in the show notes explaining what all of the different pins do. Yeah, pretty much there's a few different options you can have on that DB15. You're going to have a few different pins for analog inputs, a few different pins for digital inputs, uh, digital outputs. You can drive LEDs with those outputs. There's a power rail, there's a ground rail. Just a few different things you could leech off of for your control system. Exactly. So if we look more up close here, you can see here we have all of these wires, which at first look pretty confusing. But everything has a purpose. All of these black wires are the ground wires, which all get connected back to a common pin on the DB15 connector. And then all of the white wires correspond to signal wires, and then we have red wires which are patching to the power wires for the potentiometers. Now all of the switches have a signal wire and a ground wire, and when you hit the switch, it closes it and tells the robot one thing, and when it's the other way, it's open and it tells the robot the other thing. Switches are pretty simple, they're a one or a zero. Uh, and then you have also analog inputs like your joystick, um, which are controlled by potentiometers. And you can get sliding potentiometers, which are linear, or you can get rotational potentiometers, which are like knobs, and you can use them whichever way you think is most appropriate for controlling however you design your robot this year. The potentiometers are a little bit different than the switches because they need a power input as well as the signal. So you need to make sure that you wire that correctly, and that's explained in our show notes. Also, we've modified in the easy button, which is just really cool. All of these signal wires correspond to different pins on the connector, which in turn correspond to different variables in the code. So, say you were uh, programming and you wanted to use the analog input. That's usually going to get mapped to a X or Y core uh, plane. So, if you're looking on the third joystick input, it'd be called P3 underscore X or P3 underscore Y. Whereas digitals would be switches or aux switches. So, yeah. This is an easy button. You can buy it at uh, Staples. Costs about five bucks. I believe the proceeds go to uh, they go to charity. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, you can buy them there. It's pretty sweet. That was easy. You can hit it. You can bang it. You can do whatever you want. Now, one of the really cool things you can do with it is take it apart because basically it's a switch, a speaker, and some batteries. So this is the easy button straight off the controls that I just showed you. If you take the top off, uh, you'll see basically. Uh, it's a little popper switch here with a button that gets pushed. Now, originally, batteries live in this compartment. Unfortunately, powered controls are illegal in the first rule, so you have to take those batteries out or else you'd be violating the rules, which means your easy button's not going to say that was easy anymore, but no one's going to be able to hear it on the field anyway, so it's okay. Now what you can do, if you want to be really ambitious, plug your ears during this next segment because it's like I'm going to give you a cheat code. What you can do is take your multimeter and probe different pin, uh, solder points here and push the button and find out which one's actually the switch. But if you're lazy and don't want to do that, just look at this and look at the high resolution images that we'll be posting in the show notes and you can see exactly where to solder on. Now a soldering iron is a pretty sweet tool that you use to solder. And what soldering is, it's when you melt metal to connect other metal to complete a circuit. If you need more information, you can look up on Wikipedia. <laughs> My favorite site. So what we've basically done, we've crimped on the signal wire, which I've color-coded white, and the ground wire, which I've color-coded black, drilled the little side in the hole of the case to put them through, crimped on some crimp-on connectors so we can connect them inside the box, 
and then you just package it all back up into a neat little package here and then when you push the easy button it'll complete the circuit and send the signal to the robot. So once you've wired up all your switches and potentiometers, you might want to put them in a project box like this one you can pick up at an electronics store in your area. Like Radio Shack! Yeah. Once you have that, you might want to build a custom case for your controls. A lot of teams do this out of wood. You can bend sheet metal. There's a lot of different techniques. So you can see in this controls right here, we have nice little enclosures for the joysticks on this side, and then we have a nice enclosure for our project box on this side, leaving the middle free for, say, a dashboard, which maybe we'll explain in a future episode. You guys, remember, that this is the only link between the driver and the robot. So you don't want to skimp out on this portion. If anything, build this first. It's an important piece of the puzzle, of the pie. I of, love pie. What's your favorite kind of pie? I would say apple, but I'm partial to ch like chocolate cream. Those are my favorites, high five. For the last couple years, the joysticks included in the kit of parts have been newer round joysticks that are right-handed only. Before then, first actually provided what's uh, known as a CH flight stick, which are pretty much the holy grail of game port joysticks. If you can't find these on eBay or at a tag sale or have them lying around because you're an old team, you're probably going to want to modify your kit of parts joysticks to be less awful. You can sand off the base and you can actually take the entire stick off and replace it with a screwdriver. We'll go through that in, a, in another episode. We're actually going to have a new, another episode just on modifying the, uh, the kit joysticks to work better. Another thing you can try this year, a company called Cross the Road Electronics is selling what's called a USB chiclet. This is going to be a device that lets you plug in any USB HID compatible joystick, which is pretty much any joystick on the market these days, and plug it USB into the USB chiclet into the game port controller on your robot, letting you use modern joysticks instead of the ones provided in the kit of parts. That's pretty cool. You can just go to the store, pick up an Xbox 360 controller, and plug it straight in, and it'll work. So while we haven't figured out how to interface a Wiimote with the robot yet, I am halfway with the six axis. We hope we've given you everything you need to make your own custom controls to make driving your robot a little bit easier. Yeah, if you have any uh, questions, show suggestions, anything like that, just shoot us an email right here. Questions, questions at thebluelines.net. Dot net, not dot com. Don't forget to check out the show notes posted at thebluelines.net, which will have that pinout diagram for building your own custom controls, as well as close-ups of all the systems that we showed you today. Yeah, so once again, I'm Tom. I'm Greg. This is The Blue Lines.